Hello, Rich Folly here. We're at the National Book Festival in Washington, D.C. We're live. We're live streaming on PBS.org and on BookViewNow.org. Great to be here. Buzz Aldrin, so nice to have you join us, astronaut. And our guest host is John Sheshka. And what an awesome group right here. I'm in awe that I'm sitting with you guys right now. And I thought it would be wonderful to have John especially talk to you, Buzz. I would love it, too. Nice. nice. Your book, we should just say. Is that what say. I say first to compliment you? Yeah. <laughs> we should talk about your book, Welcome to Mars. I know this is a really important topic for you. Why don't you start with that, and we'll jump in. We have all sorts of questions for you. Sure. My license plate in California? Yeah. Mars guy. Nice. I'm in Florida. Mars guy. Yep. I'm staying in Florida, okay? Yeah. I'm a Jersey boy. Got tired of the taxes in California. <laughs> Mars, no taxes. <laughs> yeah. The best reason to go to Mars, <laughs> no taxes. I like that. Welcome Actually, your book to is Mars. spectacular, though. I mean, especially oh, for you kids. Looked at it. Oh. Yeah, looked at it. I memorized it. Yeah. Um, but like, so why do we want to take kids to Mars? I mean, why would kids want to go to Mars? Uh, they're going to read this book. Yep. And uh, they're going to act as if I'm welcoming them to yep. Mars. Yep. So they're going to learn more about it. Yeah. Suppose I uh, wrote a, another book. Hey, welcome to Earth. Yeah. Welcome to the moon. Not good living there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You better stay back at Earth. Yeah. <clears throat> but now Mars, it's much more habitable Yep. than the Earth. Yep. Now, a couple of other, you can get to moon. Pretty easy quickly, to come back. Pretty relatively, right, yeah. All you gotta do is kind of abort and then, yep. and you're on your way back. Yep. Not that easy. Yeah, because how long does it take Mars. to get to Mars? Because kids ask me questions I know, like that. I know. Yep. I, you know, a, a, a father came up with his eight-year-old yeah. And he said, my kid wants to be first on uh, Mars. Yeah. So rather than ask him uh, the obvious question, yeah. I said, now, now tell me, when you get to Mars, how long do you want to stay? <laughs> oh, I guess that's the better oh, question. Oh, right? he started thinking <laughs> a little bit. A couple of days. Because <laughs> you advocate, when you, in, in your book, you don't talk about going to Mars and coming back. You talk about going to Mars and staying on Mars. And that's the only way that you'll be able to begin that. That's not the only way. Uh, it's, the on, it's the way that most people have planned. Yep. And that includes the aerospace companies and yep. NASA. Yeah. They look at one opportunity it occurs every 26 months. Yep. The Earth catches up with Mars. And they assemble all the things that they need to get the people there. Yeah. And then to bring them back. Well, they don't say anything too much yeah. about what happens afterward or yeah, once we get what happened there. before. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I, I kept telling the people, you got to start with a plan. Yeah. Starts right now. Yeah. And is sequential, uh, evolutionary, yep. intermediate objectives, yep. leading toward occupy Mars. Yeah. So my specific plan is cycling pathways. I love to that diagram Mars. you have in there of how every what did you say twenty six months or yes. roughly two years. Yeah. when that opportunity comes around. Right. That was basically what you started with mm -hmm. way back when, right? In grad school? Not was way back, not way back. Uh, I was a fighter pilot. Yep. And uh, they, were, they were just finishing the Mercury program, going into yep. Gemini. Yep. And uh, one of the big important things I knew was to join up in space. Right. Rendezvous. Yep. yep. I knew a little French. So I knew what that <laughs> meant. That sounds much better. Or Orbital thought, rendezvous. And, and, uh, and I figured now, wait a minute, these are spacecraft. Yep. And this guy is trying to reach that one. Yep. I got a MiG pilot and I got a Sabre jet. 
and I got to get on a perfect pursuit curve. So I took and it's two trajectories, right? Yeah. No, I. Well, he doesn't know I'm coming. So. <laughs> yeah. Take note best. of this, Rich. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Neither does a stupid satellite know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Trying, that something else is yeah. coming, right? Uh, so I turned that into uh, a way that uh, that the crew would understand what's going on. Yeah. So if something think? failed, you could work it. So I got to know a good bit about how things move relative to each other. Yep. So we went to the moon on a figure eight free return. Yep. Well. Like if, using the if, gravitational If we do pull, that right? yeah. and swing around, we can go back out again. Yeah. And maybe we can encounter the moon. And so even I, do practical things like save fuel costs, right? I like that you talk about yeah, that. Like that's yeah. what's costing a lot of money well, to I, get that rocket in the cargo. I was thinking of tourism. Yeah. See, yeah. Uh, guys can fly by the backside and the front side. Yeah. NASA wasn't thinking of that. Yeah. So they didn't really like my plan. <laughs> so I came back and the former administrator of NASA, Tom Payne, said, don't worry, Buzz. Yeah. Um, you know, some other people are thinking about Mars and your gravity assist. Why don't yeah. you look at Mars? Yep. Oh my goodness. That's difficult. Yeah. So why do you think though that And I happen to think now fighter pilot uh, we got the Agena target, the Gemini, and they're both going around the Earth. Yep, and they're both circling. Yep. Now we got the Sun, and we got Mars, and the Earth's catching up. We want to go, same thing. Yeah, yeah. both in their like orbits, right? The numbers are a little bigger. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. We, know, we know how to get there, I mean, to some degree. Why do you think um, after the moon, after all, your, your Apollo 11, which really, push us into space in such a huge way, obviously. But why do you think we haven't done more at this point to be pushing towards Mars? Cash money. money. Yeah. Um, going to the moon. Neil thought it was a small step. Yeah. It was a giant leap, okay? Yep, yep. Um, and it was big, so we had to do some other things. Reusable rockets, space stations. Yeah. I had ideas about reusable yeah, yeah. boosters. Which would make things easier, right? Air Force didn't yeah. like it, wasn't ready. NASA wasn't ready. Yeah. Still a good idea. I like wheels and wings and wheels. Yeah. So you bring something back and save land it, right? on a runway. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Elon Musk sees it a different way. I was just going to mention Elon. Yeah. But let's not get into that. Oh, okay. He also sees thousands and thousands of people. Yeah. At Mars, yeah, permanently. Yeah, I keep trying to tell him I could help him. Oh no, I know how to get there. We'll build a big rocket, a yeah. big spacecraft, and we'll go to Mars, and then just leave it. Yeah, uh, that's another story. But we're talking about young people. And how that's young? Why I love you approach them and elementary. Talk to them. Well, yeah, they're yeah. they're not quite ready, maybe, unless nope. they're very smart. So this. Um, it is about middle school yep. or going into high school. Yep. Well, I like that and they'll be the kids you're talking to who will be excited to maybe get the government excited and say like, yeah. Or I like what well, you say about- they don't vote, but their parents They will. Do. And I like what you say about making us a uh, two planet species. Like have us no, on both I planets. I didn't originate and that. And that's but, over a thousand yeah. years. You put a timeline in there where you kind of lay out how much time each phase of oh yeah, yeah. Turning That's it into a nice a, piece there too. You know, a, you know uh, terraforming, as you put it. Yeah, you know, right. The planet. It's that a takes a years. that takes a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Will we? Uh, when is that? What is the next step? I, I, yeah, uh, I'm what? not sure that changing the climate is all that easy to do without Mother Nature. Right. Uh, but we'd like to change the climate. Yeah. On Mars. Yeah, so what is the next we step? Like, like how do we yeah. how do we get kids? Oh, we're not even understanding what to think about. Yeah. See, this is so young kids will see that it's practical. Not yeah. just for right. astronauts, the next generation. Right. But I mean, it's for not young, just a crazy idea, kids, right? Really? Yeah. It's the movies and it's the books that you're writing. Yeah. And it's so many of the other elements that there I think 
they're the ones that, I mean, that's what inspires young people to think and then to build upon their, their yep. knowledge. I would never have gotten anywhere near the good fortune yeah. that I had in my life without education. Right. It was really good. <clears throat> and yeah, I wasn't and a book, you, were I you wasn't excited a about space as a little kid? Space. Like was it was that your what first you excitement when you uh, were a little Superman? kid? Superman? Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, it was earlier than that. Yeah. Buck Rogers? Yep. Yep. And Buck Rogers Blackboard. had those great inventions too, right? But you know, for Which kids now, similar. for kids now, it's your book, Buzz, and and uh, it's thrilling that you've contributed to getting kids excited about it. The book is Welcome to Mars: Making a Home on the Red Planet. It's wonderful that you were able to join us today, and uh, well, I think that you're going to get people I, excited. I'm yeah, so thanks. happy at yeah. uh, seeing all thanks the people Thanks for coming here. to our living room yeah. here. That, that's right. learn about reading. Right. Reading <laughs> is how you impart yeah. knowledge, how you move up in the world. Yep. Yeah. Well, yeah. thank you very much.